I've been told by someone who is of this gender. And that's as far as I can go with it. I'm not Maori. I have trouble even pronouncing the word and I recognize this 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 fault of my own but to sit here and act like that you know exactly what I'm talking about and then to dismiss it exactly is ridiculous you need to actually do the research okay okay that's fair I, I could do some research on my end but don't don't put words in my mouth or um think that I don't know you know the the human anatomy uh but, no but one said you don't know human anatomy but gender is not just human anatomy there's so much more to it it's it's pretty simple. It's this it's or that. Not. No, no. Did you hear me give the example about the surgery case with the gentleman that had penile cancer and he had to get a total penectomy? Did you hear that example? Would that help you? Because I know that the idea of being born without a penis is a little bit hard to grasp. But did you hear the example that I've done surgeries for total penectomies? If I went to the doctor and I got my thing cut off, I'm still a guy at the end of the day. I still can't oh, have a So guy. maybe your genitalia doesn't define you as a man. Yes, that's 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 where we're trying to um, get you to see. So after I, don't I, just, I don't think it's fair for like for people to say, hey, I'm a woman and not necessarily like, dude, what about all the things that like women had to go through? You know what I mean? Like, do my are you trying to define womanhood by suffering now? Not suffering, just experience. And trans women were fighting alongside of, of cis women the entire time. There's yep. this lack of acknowledgement that trans women were also fighting for women's rights because trans women are women. And in some cases at the forefront of those fights and, you know, heading them to give more advocacy. Okay. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I guess I'm running in circles here. But I'm going to I'm going to hop off soon. I'm going to end the conversation with I do not think men can get pregnant. I don't think I learned. So you maybe. Yeah, you've different. definitely not learned a single yeah. new thing. I don't even think you've tried to learn anything. No, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm under I'm trying to understand. Um, you're hearing, but but you're I'm, not listening, I don't think. But I'm what? Hearing, you're hearing the words. But you're, yeah, sorry. No, you're you're no, 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 I just think that people are trying to find an area where they get in in this toxic society. Everyone's always out to get someone else, and and people want to find. So a place stop to being out to get trans people. No, yeah, I, we're, again, like I'm I said, Chandler, you why know, do you, you only have this strict happy. view when it comes to gender? Like, you'll never change your mind. Why? Did you ever unpack why you'd never change your mind on this? Um, I think it. I think gen gender to me personally, like, yeah, you could be, you could like dress up as you know if you think you're a woman you dress up as a woman like if, if if that makes you happy do it you know but um i what is I, dressing I, up like a woman look like you know what i mean you're you, like you, you know what i'm saying like i think i feel like you don't need to mm -hmm. answer that question because you already know what i'm going to say but um like so why'd you say it girl clothes guy clothes or guy clothes is pretty uh, uh, clothes don't have no. gender yeah my daughter you know what i'm saying daughter like no, no guy's no, gonna go out wearing a dress girl. You know, unless Why you're not? Scottish wearing like the- A hundred years ago, you could wear, men could wear dresses. I don't understand. Like, like, like fashion changes on a whim. Fashion does change. You're right about that. But I'm just So men saying, used to wear dresses. Guys. What about kilts? I just said kilts. I, I literally I just said that. that. I, I said guys it. wear kilts. Um, I have a friend whose child loves Mario and is going to be Princess Peach for Halloween but they still are a boy and they know you know they say that they are a boy they just happen to want to be princess peach because they like princess peach why is that wrong my daughter likes to occasionally shop in the boys clothes section but she still tells me she's a girl so well t-shirts t-shirt you know, t-shirt goes both ways you know like if like a lot of there's a lot of like nirvana like um same sex shirts uh you know well, then what about Unisex Princess Peach? What if, a, you know, like a, you know... Princess Peach is a chick. I mean, if you're dressing up like a girl, you're dressing up like a girl. Like, that, you know, it's it's that simple. But if you're a guy preferring. dressing up as Princess Peach, you're still a guy, but you're in girls' clothes. Like... Okay, so clothing... Which shows that gender goes beyond clothing. Yes. So, it's, so what you wear does not determine your gender. Yeah, like, yeah, no, it, you're, yeah, like, if I put on a dress right now, I'm still a guy, I still exactly. identify as a guy, but exactly. I can There you go. I don't see what you're saying. Okay. The clothing doesn't have a gender. I never said it does. You you're acting it. like it does. You said girl clothing. 
boy yeah. clothing. That's yeah, gender. Yeah, yeah. You, didn't, you didn't just imply it. You said it straight off. I can wear a dress, but it's a girl clothing item. It's, like it's a not. There's clothing. nothing. In, what What in your DNA tells you that wearing a dress is, is girly? What within your biology tells you that a dress equals girl? Just It's like not like I, I've never once said, oh, yeah, I'm going to feel real manly if I put on this dress. Like that I'm has asking never been you, biologically speaking, since you think gender and sex are the same, then there should be something within you that you can point to biologically that tells you that wearing a dress is for girls. I think that's a silly question. I think I think you're. I think you're making a silly statement. So yeah. I know why don't we answer silly questions then? If it's so silly, you should be able to answer it. Right. You you can't answer it, Chandler, because the reason why you can't answer it hey, is because gender is social and psychological. Chandler. It's, it's, it's social nothing, and yeah. psychological. Socially, you, you have seen so. that typically women like are the ones that wear clothing. dresses. Typically, women are the ones to wear that wear dresses. So psych psychologically, you do not want to um, wear those dresses for your for yourself. But that's not every man in, in, in the history of mankind. They have worn dresses and been men. Harry Styles wears dresses, and like every woman <laughs> loves him. So like, it, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. Okay, I think we're getting a little off the men can be pregnant question. But what I'm saying is, is hold on. Sorry, I was, uh, I was reading the chat. I know you don't like when people read the chat. Um, but uh, shoot, I got off topic. <laughs> I I don't I I think that there's like a style of clothing that you can obviously tell is guys clothing or women's clothing. Yes, I can wear women's clothing. People are going to know it's women's clothing most of the time, at least depending on what it is. Like I know some guys wear leggings and stuff. I'm not going to wear that. Um, so it's social. Your social good. group will tell you and will notice that you are wearing a dress when typically men don't wear dresses. Yes. Okay, so you now recognize gender is a social and psychological construct. I think uh, gender is a psychological thing. I think it's a thing where, where you're trying to find yourself and, and fit in. But at the end of the day, there's, um, you know, it, it's uh, what bathroom you go in should be the whatever sex you're born with. Why, why what you were born with instead of what you have? Because those babies that weren't born with penises, right? And, and, and they get bottom surgery. What, like, they can't go to the bathroom because now they have something different? I uh, never said they can't go to the bathroom. I so think it's about they what they have currently, then. The penises that they have currently, even if it's constructed. So, by, by, like, so to surgery. answer, so you're, you, you really want me to answer. So, sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think you should go to the bathroom, whatever you're born with. And I think. That um, I think children are too young to go through a transition. But surgery. Chandler, I'm saying, why can't it be what they currently be, have? That, that because be. if it's what they're born with, Should they can't use any surgery. public bathroom. I don't know. I think I think um, I think I would be uncomfortable if I had a a, a little girl, right? And there was a a guy going into her bathroom. You know, I, I no, Chandler, Chandler, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying, right? We established there are baby boys, right? There, there are there are babies that are born male. Yes. Right. There are babies that are born male, and they don't have penises. Yes. Okay. So since they were born without a penis, they can't use any public bathroom. No. Okay, so it's about what they currently have now as um, adults or as, like, older people. It's what they currently have. The genitalia that they ha have now. I don't know. I, I think... Um... You're trying to come up with a way around this. Why? <laughs> she's wording it she's it's I, i'm she's not wording it. it okay chandler i'm just saying what it I, can't I, I, be what, what they're born with because if it's what they're born with then they can't use any public bathroom you disagree with that right if you're so it doesn't matter what you're born then... with it matters what you currently have it's like toilet paper math it's not adding up 
Yeah, I'm saying it's it's either that you only so should they it's just a yes or no question. Should they go to public bathrooms? Should they be able to go to public bathrooms even though they were not born with certain genitalia? Everyone should have the right to go to the bathroom. Okay, so it's about what they currently have because you said that if you have yes, a penis, yes. okay, you have to but, go into the men's the bathroom, I, and if you have a that, vagina, that, you have to go like into the women's bathroom. This, so it's not what about I'm what saying, they're born with, it's about what they currently have. But correct? in a way, it, it's what you're saying with what they currently have. I think, yes. okay. see, that's see, okay, I want to answer this, and I want to I agree with you with this answer, right? I want to, I want to say, yeah, you know, if you went through transition, go to that bathroom, right? But it's it's just like in my head, I'm thinking about the future and I'm thinking about my kid or kids. And so I then, OK, so fine. You want to ban trans people from from using the restroom. Um, where, where should we go? Where should we go to the bathroom? I don't, I don't want to ban trans people from using the restroom. Well, well, yes, you, uh, so you want to force us to use the restroom that we don't identify with? Statistically, Chandler, do you know which group has the highest anything. rates of crimes and um, SA? Two other people, yes, yeah, cis, cisgendered YT that's why, men. That's why I'm more worried about a male becoming a woman and going into the woman's restroom. And that, that's what I was trying to can say. Can you give me any? What? Can you give me any example of that happening? It's an yeah. insulting <laughs> point to make, and you have nothing to back it. Back we your have damn not claim. Effort um, when a transmit Chandler. Wait, wait one second. I want to make this an extra that. point for you, just so you know. That. Why go through all of that effort, Chandler? Just listen for two seconds. Just for two seconds. Just listen. For two seconds, Chandler. Artemis, just listen. You're stop. No, before I forget. You're not going to forget. It will take two seconds if you just give me two seconds. The amount of effort that you're implying here when a trans man could go by your rhetoric and literally go into the women's restroom saying, I was born female. That's it. Like, you're literally, a cis man could say, I'm a trans man, and go into the women's restroom. That's your rhetoric. It, you're making it more dangerous. Uh, Chandler, you have an echo. You're going to have to leave the app and then come back in. You do not have to drop from the live. You do not have to exit the app. Just go back to your phone's home screen and come back in. From the live. Yeah, Chandler, just just go back to your phone's home screen and then come back in. You don't have to exit. You don't have to drop. There we go. That's your work. What's going on? Everything was like echoing ten times. All yeah. I was saying is, is, yeah, it was just an echo. All I was saying is, is that under your rhetoric, a cis man could just say they're a trans man and go into the women's restroom. They don't even have to go through any effort at all because a trans man would be born female. So by, but, but by using your rhetoric, you're making it more dangerous for bathroom situations than you would be allowing trans women to use the restroom and trans men to use the men's restroom. All right. So I, I see what you're saying. And when I think of like public restroom, I think of the restrooms that have like, you know, a few stalls or a few um, urinals. And so that's that those are the ones I'm worried about. Um, or, you know what I mean? Because because uh, there's always going to be a few bad apples in the bunch. Um, so we punish the whole just, group because of the few bad apples. Got it. With, with that, unfortunately, that's what happens. And it happens in school. All right. So wait, all wait, men are officially all banned from all of society. All yeah. Can't be society. Yeah. Ch so Ch Ch is that you and your profile pic? So let me answer. Let me answer. Wait, Chandler, question. Chandler, gonna, is that you on, in your profile pic? Let me, I'm gonna, I'll answer you in a second. Okay. I'm going to answer your question. Uh, he wanted proof, and there, there's there been proof. Um, hey, so hey, I'll, I'll, hey. Have, I'll have to add you or follow you so I can um, send you a TikTok, but uh, I'll go find it later oh, on. Oh, God, your proof is a TikTok. Okay, Chandler, um, please answer no, the question. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying. I'm okay. trying. I listened to you, and now you're not listening to me. Um. But there's uh the, like a the school for I think it was in Virginia, you know let um trans uh the guys who became women it was the trans women uh go into the women's it's, how how are we this far into this conversation and you're still calling trans women guys how how are we this far in how, Chandler how I, like it's do you want to have an like, actual discussion or are you just going to just keep hopping back I'm just and trying forth to answer the question I'm trying to answer the question with a concern that I have I'm not saying people should be banned from a restroom um and stop it, saying that. okay Chandler uh, can you answer it, it, the can you can you please okay. get to the point 
what I'm saying is there are cases You're where jumping all over. The trans women have sexually assaulted other women in the restroom, and that's what I'm worried I mean, about. Guess what? There are cases of cis men doing that too, so let's ban all cis men from society. Yeah, Chandler, is, is that you in your profile pic? It is. Okay, Chandler, that means you should be banned from all schools. Why? Because you have the highest that's, majority that, that's your, race That's your argument. Crime. That is your argument, Chandler. No. You're saying no, if there are cases of the people that are similar doing crimes, then that every, like the whole group must be punished. So since there are plenty of cis, white um men um, hurting children in schools, you should be banned from schools. That's your rhetoric. No, that's a difference. What I'm saying is how is not different. different. How <laughs> is it different? Explain to me how it's different. So, okay, it, shoot, you know, I, I'm just, I'll, at the end of the day, I'm just saying, right? So it's not that, different. So you concede that it isn't different and that it's the same thing. And so you're going to change well, well, that, I got that same thing that you're changing to me with schools. I could change that a thousand ways to different, you know, other scenarios. Okay, um, but exactly. That, that, that's your, Chandler, that's your argument. That's what I'm saying. Your argument doesn't make any sense. But what even I'm if saying a person is, pretends to be trans, even if, is, even if there's your... a person pretending to be trans to access women's spaces, they still will, in, in, to, com, to commit a crime, they're still committing a crime. Just yeah. because they're saying that they're, they're, they're tra um, transgender, that does not mean anything. They still committed a crime. So I heard, so one of, one of the things that Abby says, if you don't know who Abby is, you should check them out. They're amazing also. But the one thing that they say that I think really hits home is what if somebody dressed up like you and they posed as Chandler and they committed a crime? Should you be arrested and be punished for somebody that dressed up as you and posed as you? Hopefully Should. I have a solid alibi for where I really well, was. Oh my God. That's not, that's what, not really? no, I, sh I shouldn't be that's punished for something I didn't do. There you right, go. of course. There you go. So Bam. The community, so that's the point. And I absolutely love that analogy that they make. And I, I hear what you're saying and I understand, right? And I agree with you to a point. Why does it not I'm apply for trans people then? What, what, you're not letting me finish what I'm saying. And yes, you know, maybe I, tried, it a thousand times. maybe I, I, I take too long to explain something and, and thank you for being patient with me. And I apologize about that. But what I'm saying is from a point where like, okay, in 10 years when I have three kids, I want three kids and I, I hope they all live amazing lives, but I'm worried about society because society is forcing these, um, whether it's gender, um, politics or whatever it may be, but people force things on you. Just like one Please thing that I have never have kids. Please never have kids. Chandler, you can okay, have a trans. Too. You can have a transgender you. child. Did is, you know? I don't. I, if if my kid, you, if, uh -huh. if my kid wants to be happy and want and, and you know wants to dress up as a girl, I'm I'm I might not agree with that, but guess what? I'm going to support him. But but well, if you have a transgender girl, you're going to tell her to use the men's restroom. I don't want my kids to feel uncomfortable in the bathroom. If you have a transgender girl, you are going to tell her to use the men's restroom. I'm not gonna let. I'm gonna tell her she's too young to have those those thoughts. That she's to wait till she's. So you're, you're going to deliberately to cause her trauma. Yeah, like Chandler, she's too young to be herself, so you'll be okay if she doesn't want to go out or doesn't want to make friends or doesn't want to go to school and is severely depressed because you think she's too young to be happy. No, no one's ever too young to be happy. But what okay, I'm so saying you allow her to be herself is, is, is you don't even know what you want to do for the rest of your life when you're 14, 15, you know, majority of the population. How are you going to expect a, a kid? Especially some of these kids are five, six, seven years old. I'm four, okay, at seven years old, I knew I was a girl. At 14 years old, I knew I was a girl. Yeah, I knew and the guess what? At two years old, I knew, I knew how I wanted to be referred to. Remembering, I knew, I knew I was all of that at those ages genders between three and seven and maybe they can't you know you can't always and articulate and express and yourself why, why are kids yes. even learning Don't about that why, no, why no, are kids even no. being like like kids no. should be chandler it's who about. they are it's not about learning about anything nope. but he's it's telling who them they are that it's an internal sense it. of self when you wake up in the morning, you know, it's, um, I think I heard a door use this one too. Like if you came home at a young age and you said, oh, you know, mommy or daddy, I like this girl. 
you, probably most parents wouldn't bat an eye. But what if, you know, they came home and said, Mommy, Daddy, I like this boy. Why should that be any different? If That's my daughter came home. That's not if 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 my kid was was gay or lesbian, it, I wouldn't care. They just but you care if they're trans. They but you care if they're trans because what I'm saying is, would you allow your trans them. daughter? Would you allow your trans daughter to wear the clothes that make her comfortable if she only likes wearing dresses? If she likes her hair long, I'm gonna let my kid whatever wear whatever they want that's appropriate to, that makes them feel happy. But I'm not gonna let them make any life altering decisions till they move out of my house. Okay, so they're not allowed to be happy until they move out of your house. Did I say that? Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly precisely what you just said. Yeah, you happy. said that you will you will deny them health care if even if they need this health care until you're out of until they're out of your house, they, they cannot have this health care because trans children they still need gender affirming care. So if you like refuse to give your child gender affirming care, that's going to make them like the more likely to self unalive. And then yes. you don't have a child at all. And if we can get any message through to you, I think that we can all agree. It's 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 that, you know, one person is enough to support and look at the Trevor Project. And it's better to have an alive child and be supportive. Um, the rates I'll, are I'll, extremely I'll, I'll high. Always, I'll always be support. I I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And self I don't. I don't want any. I don't want any kids to hurt themselves. Just you know, socially transitioning names, um, you know, they, you know, talking to a therapist, it doesn't mean that children are having surgery at these young ages that false media is portraying. That's not what but, but anybody's saying. I don't think people who, who still like may not even know what they want to do with the rest of their okay. life. Okay. Let's about their gender. Okay. Stop. Hang on. Okay. Let's, let's take this back to the beginning. Do you know when gender identity develops? Um, like what, seven years old or something like that? Yeah, between the ages of three and seven. Do you do you understand that? Does that make sense to you? I, I, yes, I understand that. Okay, fantastic. Um, so that means that transgender kids know who they are at that age. Um, when a transgender child goes through the wrong puberty, that causes trauma, that causes irreversible changes. And the, as a result, the self-unaliving ideation rate is astronomically high for transgender youth. I know that in 2021 alone, approximately 60% of transgender youth seriously considered uh, self-unaliving and 20% made an attempt. 20% of transgender youth in 2021 made an attempt on their life. We know how to stop that from happening. And that is through gender affirming care. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, I, I, I don't think anyone should be unaliving themselves. I, I don't think anyone should be hurting themselves. I think everyone should should be happy. But what I'm saying is, yeah, if, if my kid want, you know, is a guy and wants to become a woman, I'm not going to do any life-altering decisions until they move out of my house. But if they want so to go what to are daughter, you? Stop, to slow to down. Kid, what are you going to do then? If, 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 you, have a, if you have a daughter who was, uh, who was assigned male at birth but comes up to you and says, hey, I'm, uh, I'm a girl, what are you going to do? Let's say, let's say they're 10 years old. What are you going to do? I, I, I'll, I'll, you know, let, they can wear what they want to be happy. I'm going to support them, but, but in a way of like, we can go, you know, go talk to a okay. therapist. Okay. Let's, okay. Doctor. Let's, let's, but let's say that they surgeries or hormones. They're not stop. Stop. Jesus okay. Christ. Tyler. So if you go talk to a therapist, right, you go talk to a therapist and they say, but what's best for your child, for them to be like, to have a good social life um, and help with their gender dysphoria is to get gender affirming care. That's what's best for your child. Will you listen to that psychologist? I want to say yes, but also um, in, in a way of like, you know, my you want to say yes, but you're not going to say yes. Even though I thought otherwise. You know, I, I thought okay. I should so, other things when I was so here's, here's, what, here's what happens. Okay. So your 10-year-old your, your child says that, hey, uh, I'm a girl. Uh, she, she changes her name. She changes the way she dresses, uh, changes her pronouns, etc. But she's still suffering. That's, that's not enough. Like, she's, she's made all these changes, but it's not enough. She is still suffering. Uh, at that point, you take her to the doctors. They give her, they they suggest that you take her to a gender therapist, right? Are you going to take her to the gender therapist? Yes, I'll I'll, I'll take her. Fantastic. Okay, okay. So here's here's what happens when she sees this therapist. She's going to speak for them for a absolute minimum of six months. Six months minimum. It's normally many many years. Um, 
if she shows insistence, persistence, and consistence, like literally unwavering, then she can get a gender dysphoria diagnosis. If she gets a gender dysphoria diagnosis, the next step would be puberty blockers. Would you would you accept that? Would you do puberty blockers if after all this time in, in therapy, uh, that's what the therapist recommends? Would you do that? Um, it might be different when I actually have a kid, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say no. So, I, I instead, you would, you would, so, so when, when, when a transgender child is suffering, they're, they're, they're isolating themselves. Um, they're, they're, they're not participating in society. Their, their grades are dropping. They're experiencing self unaliving ideation, whether they're telling you about it or not. Um, so what you're saying is rather than going on these puberty blockers, you would want your child to continue to sit in that. And I just want to make no, this clear. No. You saying no, no Chandler, no, you saying, no. wait, 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 uh, and I'll let you respond. You saying no is a life altering decision you saying so no saying my yes. child cannot get this care that could save their lives is a life altering decision of, of course of course i want to save my kid's life but but that's like back that's like back in someone in a corner of like yes i, I would if i had to do something to save my kid's life at the end of the day it's it, yes I, I will save my kid's life so I'm would you do, would you take the recommendation of of the doctors and start I'm puberty blockers? In my household, it will not come to that. It will not come to that because, like, yeah, you're, you know, your I'm, household trauma doesn't happen. Trauma does happen. I grew up. You're just gonna do, you trauma not, away. do you not believe trans people exist? Like, do you think they trans just learn this exist. and then that's like what? Like, trans do you not believe do that they exist. genuinely I'm wondering, exist? I'm wondering why in the past 10 years has it been. I got cash app to kick you. You have a good day. Bye. It wasn't, it's not the past 10 years. They've been around forever. What is wrong with people? Why is it everybody's been going on the past 10 year thing? I, I had this debate earlier where, and I, I don't know if it's just like people are discovering technology or they're actually reading. I need to make a background about that. No, yeah. I know what it is. It's directly causing the, the years a bit. They should be actually saying it's back to when Obama first brought up trans rights. That is when people lost their ever loving minds. Um, you can see the trajectory. Obama mentioned, um, inclusion of trans people a bit more of it i believe 2008 2009 um and that's what people are referencing even though for obama to even reference that would mean that there was discrimination and trans people suffering um at that time to the to the point to where the president of the united states was mentioning this so here's the here's the sad reality of it if it's not in someone's forefront they don't give a shit of it I'm in the, yep. I'm bisexual. I am the, probably one of the more privileged parts of the acronym, right? Like I, I am, I chose a pansexual husband. I pass. No one has to know I'm bi. No one has to know he's pan. That could have gone very differently if I had fallen in love with a woman or someone who's non-binary or any of the other different genders. Um, but it's recognition in stepping outside of your comfort zone and recognizing that like, other people are going through systems of oppression or systems of like rights violations and that just because you're not experiencing it doesn't mean it's happening and you need to put yourself in their shoes yes and chat artemis is 110 percent correct discrimination amongst the lgbtq community is extremely high especially in places of business and workplace and as much as people are more accepting. There are many people that are still closeted. And as Artemis said, you know, bisexuality is one of the more, you know, privileged, so to speak, because you can hide and pass. But it's 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 very real. Discrimination discrimination is very real, especially in professional settings or any setting. So don't think that it's it's like when people said that drugs were only in um lower income areas nope they hit everywhere high income low income wealthy it's not, you know she's spot on it's just that a lot of people don't understand they, they say they're empathetic but to be truly empathetic you have to be able to place yourself in someone else's shoes listen to their story listen to what they're dealing in life and be able to not only empathize with that but go you know what i don't want them to continue living with that where do i go from here Okay. All right, guys. We're going to bring up the next guest now. I'm going to disable sub only uh, chat for a little bit. Um, just a reminder we do not talk about previous guests. Um, 
I just got a, a, a second cash app. Um, so I, I got cash up twice to get, to get that guy kicked. So if either of you would like a refund, please let me know. Um, if neither of you respond, I will assume that the second person would like a refund. All right, I'm not going to be able to read all the chat. All right, so we're going to bring up the next guest, guys. Oh, they um, said to keep so, it. Oh, they just said to keep it. Thank you so much. Uh, keep tapping away. Tap, tap, tap. Share the live. Um, I don't know when we're going to end. I am hanging out with my friend today. I don't know what time. Ooh, Queen Jasmine, I'm so sorry. I meant to bring you I meant to bring you up like an hour ago. My God, I'm so sorry, Queen Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> Queen, hi, Queen Jasmine. Hey. Hi, I'm sorry. I literally meant to bring you up as soon as you requested, and I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. How you doing, Keeks? Hello, hello, chat. How old are you, please? I am 26. Fantastic. And can men get pregnant? Ooh, we have a subway of going, guys. Five more subs in the next uh, 12 minutes, and you all get a new uh, emoji from the medium difficulty tier. Ooh. <laughs> can, you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can, the question is, can men get pregnant? You with me? I can't hear you anymore. You're off the app. I cannot oh, yeah. hear you anymore. Hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. When you're off the app, we can't hear you. Oh, I apologize. I was trying to switch screens. Okay. Um, yes, so no. Um, men cannot get pregnant, but trans men can. Are trans men men? Yes, but Fantastic. I guess Therefore, by the definition... get pregnant. Well, what I'm trying to say is, is trans men exclusively can get pregnant, but men, like, if you identify, like, as a, just a man, like, not a trans man, born a male, and you're, like, a born male, and you say that you are also a man, you cannot get pregnant. Yeah, I'm not making the claim that males can get pregnant. I'm, I'm making the claim okay. that men can get pregnant. There's definitely a difference there, and I agree that males cannot get pregnant, yes. Okay. I actually wanted, that was one reason why I wanted to come on here because of that little statement that you just made yet. Um, males will never be able to become pregnant. I am Incorrect. aware, I am aware that there was a cis woman that had a uterus transplant. It's been about a hundred. That it was so. over a hundred. Yes, whatever the case. I am aware that cis women have gotten the transplant. Um, however, I and the only reason why I'm bringing this up because I almost kind of it kind of feels a bit delusional to me because you also have to factor in the ecosystem that a female has to have a baby that that males will never have so i what do you feel mean? like what do you mean ecosystem? when i mean when i mean a ecosystem i mean what a woman per, or what a female i'm gonna use the terms correctly because i don't want anybody to think i'm not educated or whatever the case um <laughs> But when I mean an ecosystem, I mean an ecosystem within the body that men do not have and or males do not have. And then also, too, when it comes to hips and when it comes to childbearing. I'm not saying that they're that going requires... to uh, have vaginal births. They, it would be by, oh, by a I'm curious. I'm curious then. Then how is it that males will have a are you talking about a cesarean? Well, so, yeah, so if I can perform really quick on this, uh, so oh, I had a so those, so no, cis I'm, women I'm, that I'm, have to I'm not asking, is it a cesarean? I'm trying to answer so, so hard. Uh, so cis women that have had the uterine transplant all deliver through cesarean. So it is strictly a cesarean process of delivery. Um, even with cis women that have had the uterine transplant. Um, and I'm also curious about the ecosystem comment because there are studies you pull up on this that doctors actually say this is medically possible. What it comes into play is ethical ramifications. Is it ethically sound to do? It's not that it scientifically is it, is it ethically right to do? Scientifically, okay. it is so possible. What, I can speak to that ethically. Okay. Right, and it's under um, it's uh, widely disputed. Um, I can provide more research about that on a different day. 
Oh, no, that's that's totally fine. So what I mean by ecosystem, biological males lack the natural structures and hormonal environment needed for pregnancy. We can help. So did, this, so did okay. the so did the MH women. Sorry, say that again. So did the women with MRKH syndrome. So MRKH syndrome is being born with the absence of a uterus or even the absence of a vaginal canal. So okay, they didn't necessarily make a hospitable environment not, for that either. Yes, Artemis, we're not talking about exceptions. And that's something but that the, a woman but, has but a medical but, condition. But a transmitting uterine transplant would be an exception. But wait, that is an exception. Exceptions. Trans well, media, yeah. uterine transplant would be an exception. And when we have to understand that this is going to be successful in a trans woman, we would see where it was successful or wasn't successful in cis women. So let, that's absolutely let, important yeah. to the conversation. Okay, okay so, this so. Is a small population, sorry to interrupt. Oh, okay, you know, that's fine. The trans community, you know, uh, somebody correct me if I'm incorrect. I believe it's about 1.7% maybe in the trans community. I have a daughter that has red hair and blue eyes. The prevalence of that is about just as common, maybe, you know, a little less. D, you know, doesn't make anybody less important, less valid, less, um, uh, less um, necessary to rights. You know, okay, so regardless, regardless of what was it, the, the, the medical condition that you said that the woman had, what was it called? MRKH syndrome, okay. born with so the regardless uterus or without a vagina. Yes, yes. So regardless, regardless of them not having the uterus or vagina, they, uh, females naturally already have a functioning hormonal system that's tailored for pregnancy. They have the proper vascular, va uh, vascular connections. They have all of these. Peace. these. If it peace, happens, peace. will you wow. believe it? If it happens, will you believe it? Wait, hold on. I'm I'm just trying to explain. I'm just trying to explain. I was trying to explain the ecosystem that you guys were talking about. So I'm trying to lay some ground here. So hold on one moment. So going back to that disease that Artemis was talking about or or sick or a medical condition, not disease. Sorry, I apologize. Not disease. The medical condition that Artemis was talking about, regardless of them having a uterus and regardless of them not having a vagina, they still have the the internal ecosystem hormonal system functioning hormonal system to bear children males what's cannot so what's, this what's is something that will about not a happen. female hormonal system compared to mine I, I have estrogen in my body i just i just told you i just okay, said i just think that they have the, the proper vascular connections to make Keeks, this how so because i just said this is how so when I just said that they just had the proper ridiculous point to make. Okay, that's a with, different thing. You and you were talking about hormones so? and now you're talking about something no, separate. No, I I said I said also in in addition. Keeks, okay. If it happens, so great. will you believe it? So hormones is not what brings the child Stop. into the world. Answer Michaela's question. Oh it's a simple one. It's a real it's simple, a simple one. Question. If it happens, will you believe it? If it okay, if it happens, then of course I would. However, Okay. We're so not talking about hypotheticals, Michaela. Michaela, we're not talking about hypotheticals. We're literally talking about hypotheticals. We're literally talking about hypotheticals. This is the thing. We're definitely not talking, we're definitely not point talking point about hypotheticals. We're literally point talking point about hypotheticals. Michaela, when was a when did a male give birth? Michaela, when did a male give birth? No, I'm actually curious. When did a male give birth? I'm curious. I'm not saying peace. That is not what well, I'm saying. What I'm saying. Okay, is, so then why are we bringing up hypotheticals? Because it actually saying. hasn't been proven. Okay, you just want to talk, so just go and talk. No, no, Goodbye, not I at all. Crash, I can kick you. You have a go on. Jesus Christ! There wow. were a few things I wanted to discuss that, like, I couldn't get a word in. I was pulling up casework. So these two women that have MRK8 syndrome, they have the organs that would process and distribute some of the hormones, and so they had to be given them artificially to help make sure that the high risk pregnancy, which it was labeled, was closely monitored, and that we were getting enough medication to be able to go through with it. This is the same thing that a trans woman would go through as well. We would provide the hormones through injections this the, like this is the thing is that medically speaking scientifically speaking it's not improbable we've actually already done it in mice as people know we do a lot of studies on mice and rats because their their systems are very similar to ours so it has already been done in mice i think there might have been one case of it being done in rats it's the ethical dilemma coming up when it comes to doing it in humans that's it 
I just I just wanted to say um, I just wanted to say when it comes to technology and um, medical advancements, I don't understand why people just deny the possibilities. Right? There was a point in time in humanity where we we believed that we would never be able to talk to someone across the world from us. Now we can. Yeah. A, the, a cell phone. So, like, why can we just why can't we just believe that things can happen? If the medical community says it's possible, why are we just going to be like it's never going to happen? I don't believe it. I think it's just a ridiculous argument. There is evidence that it's going to happen in the future. So, I, I don't understand why we are arguing about it. Because they don't want it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So like, guys, I get that there are obstacles that we have to overcome in order to to uh, to get to the point where we can do this. I recognize that. I know that the, the whole vascular thing that's that's an obstacle. Um, and as I, I would imagine, as far as uh, ethically speaking, it, it becomes a question of will it be will it be okay for the child? Will the child come out healthy? And and will the uh, will the mother be healthy? Like, if we can get to the point where people are healthy and with this outcome, then I'd imagine it would become a thing that happens. Right? Am I right here? Like, is, is yeah. that what's the, the ethical side of this? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so as to with health, it has to do with uh, a lot of politics, to tell you the truth. Um, of course, unfortunately, always. money follows a lot of this. Um, but yes, there are boards of, you know, the moral ethics. I used to sit on one at um, a very big hospital they used to be number one i believe they're number three or four now so that's as much as i'll say so if you want to google what that was back in 2004 then you'll know where i'm speaking from but you know they look at it from the point of the greater good and that's where a lot of the decisions are made but they have to get you know funding and it's a very complex thing that um i ended up stepping down from that panel because i got a little bit discouraged by how much was ruled by money i can imagine Fuck capitalism. Okay, guys, keep tapping. We're going to keep going. Um, we're going to bring up another guest now. Just a reminder, if you requested to talk to or about a previous guest, please unrequest. We do not talk about previous guests. Your points must stand on their own. Do not speak for others. Ooh, mermaid lesbians. Haven't seen you in ages. Hey, how's it going? Man, it's been a while. It has been. <laughs> I cannot get pregnant this generation to shut up. Good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well. Let me get that camera on. So, so far, so good. How you doing, Beza? What the fuck is this generation? Uh, you're you're a child. Goodbye. No fucking kids these days. Wow. I love it when their mic doesn't yeah. work. So, um. I wanted to, I was popping through just doing a quick scan of TikTok and heard about the, the studies um, for the uterine transplants. And I wanted to um, add a little bit of context with that. Um, and the context that I have comes from working um, politically in this area and helping push legislation uh, here in PA to make sure that we all have equal rights across the state. Um, Background for those of you who haven't seen me on here before, um, I'm a cybersecurity professor, um, where my focus is in healthcare legislation and creating interoperability models to govern how we share health and medical data across state borders. So, um, yeah, it's really cool, right? Uh, basically, what that, what that means is if you work in DC and you go to Virginia, the Virginia doctor, if you're a T-bone at a red light, can access your DC data instead of having to send an email, do a request, have their um, doctor's ID verified and then um, do all of that before they give you medical um, care in the ER. So two years ago, I got to um, have lunch with Stephen Wilkinson uh, right before COVID started. Uh, Stephen Wilkinson uh, works with the University of Lancaster in the UK. He was over here doing um, some talks and he's one of the guys that has really pioneered all of the work you guys are talking about. Him and Nicola Williams um, have been doing all of the ethical implications of human reproduction for several years um, to the point where they actually represent that board to the United Nations. So the conversation that we had was that it is still in the very, very, very early days for uterine transplants of any kind. Yes, they've done it in rats, but they've only done female to female. They haven't tried female to male yet. And as of July of this year, they still have not tried it. Um, is it possible? They believe so. But there are some really interesting 
um, nuances to, around that that are difficult to re-architect, if that makes sense. So when I talk about architecture, what I'm talking about is how the body functions, and I hate to use the word ecosystem, but as a holistic, multi-layered um, machine, right? I know people have compared uh, the human body to computers before, and when you look at it in that same way, every part has to go in a certain place for a certain result to happen, right? It's not just um, the hormones, it's not just the um, nerve indicators inside um, that part of the body that are able to um, connect into your own system to pull out um, resources, which the male body at birth is not built to do. And there's one of the issues and challenges they're finding is how do you reprogram parts of the male body to function in the way of a female body? And I'm also saying this is a post-op trans woman. One of the biggest challenges that we're going to see with this is how do you re-architect the resource management of your body to support another body in a way that it won't treat it like a foreign object? And that's Are the you? number one ethical concern. Um, in terms of how they manage and look at growing a secondary thing inside your body, because your body looks at it initially um, just like any other foreign object. Are, are they concerned about the immunosuppressant rejection and the effects on the fetus? Is that the... 100%. That's one of the big ones that they've looked at. And that's not just there. That's in any transplant. Any transplant can fail because your immuno uh, response system doesn't consider it part of your body. Yeah. And that's actually the number one cause internationally for any type of transplant failure. So I'm actually an anesthesiologist with the doctorate. So, um, you know, I'm... You know, I've, I've done, you know, transplants and things like that. So we'll definitely have to talk sometime because this is right up my nerd alley of like, it got my attention too. So. All right. So, <laughs> Long-term effects. I wonder how they'll do that just because we do already have so many issues with rejections, like with livers, lungs. Guys, I do have a guest. I have, I have to, uh, I have to say hi to them. <laughs> One second. Uh, Christopher. Oh, no, I don't have a guest anymore. Okay. I guess. <laughs> But they've been doing the um, the transplants female to female in mice for almost 15 years and are still having issues with the rejection rate being so high. And they expect to even start doing um, female to male mice to see what the base acceptance rate is. And they're looking at mid-2028 to 2030 to even begin that just from all of the paperwork and the legal compliance and the ethical board reviews that they have to go through just to get approval to do that. So hey, mermaid did do it on. They did do a male one for mice. They did. From what I've heard from them, they have not done one at University of Lancaster. Have I know that they. Well, I I, I don't think it was the University of Lancaster. I, I, it's other universe. Let me pull it up. I know Guys, I would I would like to move on to the next to, to the next guest. <laughs> Sorry. We're all nerding out here. This is like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. How are you doing, Elena? Hello. How old are you, please? I am 35. 35, fantastic. And can men get pregnant? Okay, so I have debated and debacled with myself over this. And um, I will say trans men can. Now, before I get the attack, okay, I will put an analogy out there and Hopefully you guys will kind of pick up what I'm putting down. So when you go into your favorite Dutch Bros or Starbucks and you just want a plain coffee, okay, in its natural state, how do you say you want that coffee? Do you just say, I want a coffee? Correct? Okay. Sure, well, I don't you want really don't really go to too many coffee places, honestly. Okay, well, so if you want even. decaf, right, it has to have that wording. You have to say, I want a decaf coffee, okay? So men in their natural state. Is decaf can, coffee coffee? It is coffee, but it's lacking the caffeine. Sure, so, it's lacking caffeine, but it's still coffee. Yeah. 
Yeah. So and says, in that sense, if, if yes. holds up the container and they'd be like, and someone's like, what is this? Is this hot chocolate? What is this? They'll be like, oh, no, that's coffee. Regardless if it's so, decaf yes. or caffeinated coffee, they'll say it's coffee when, if somebody asks what this is. Okay. But again, it's coffee. If you just want straight coffee, it's coffee. Now, the same thing with like the term cis, I hate it because it it's a label. Because you're transphobic. That... You hate it because you're transphobic. But you you don't you don't think the trans identities are valid. And they just I do that to speed valid. up the line. It's just what typically people order. So like if I go to a like um if I go to McDonald's to get fries and I have to tell them I don't want salt on the fries. But there's like <laughs> It's just what they typically, that pe people typically want. So they make an assumption until you say otherwise. But that's not, that that doesn't make it any less fries but just because it doesn't have salt on them. May I well, ask what is so again, offensive um, about cis, cis, cis woman as a cis woman myself? May I ask what is so offensive about that? Because honestly, I'm only also hearing transphobia when I hear that that's offensive. So can you explain that? <clears throat> Okay, so I'm not transphobic whatsoever. Um, I actually that, you, don't, have you don't get to decide if you are. The, the trans community gets to decide if you are. You, okay. it's not, you don't do you, label yourself as, can I, as not can transphobic. I just, can I speak? So yes, you, you say that I'm transphobic, but I have a friend, Raquel, who... Yeah, that's called name, tokenizing. Her name was Rafa, okay? And oh, and now, now you just there? dead named her. Wow. Stop. No, I'm telling you what she Stop while you're behind. I uh, no. No, okay. yeah. Don't A don't tokenize. B do not dead name. Wow. <laughs> okay. Just so can we can just move on. Just make a point. I'm sorry, don't yeah. bring up sorry, do not bring don't poorly. bring them up. Please. So just break my make your point, point. My point is, okay, that you are putting labels where I didn't ask for that label that you are giving me. So I'm a woman, period. Are you white? I'm mixed. What does it matter? You can't change your skin color as much as you can change your tokenization of uh, gender and that's, sexual preference or identity. That's actually not true. I've Michael Jackson. Trans the entire time. Proof of that. Getting a tan is proof of that. You can change your skin tone. <laughs> You can tan yourself all you want, and you're still probably going to be a skinny white girl from the Jersey Shore. Uh, Michael Jackson had a skin condition. Okay, so that's assumptions as well. You're saying I'm a skinny white girl from Jersey Shore? Seriously? No, I was making a general uh, statement about Jersey Shore girls and how they have an entire subculture of tan on Friday, beach on Friday night. But and as humans, we label things to relay information to another person. It's not it's not be to be asked. It's just we do that to relay information to the other person. So when when we say cisgendered, we're just relaying that your gender identity and your biological sex align typically. But and also but like that's all like we're saying. Why Everyone can't we say that information? But did I ask for that though? But did what, any uh, woman ask for that though? I, I asked people that, didn't ask for the label. Why can't I just woman? be called a, I'm woman. a cisgender woman? Why can't I just be what I am? Okay, yes, because but I'm a cisgender woman. Back, so when I, I say generally. cisgendered, that is what I'm telling. I'm trying to relate to the other person. That's my experience with my gender identity. So that's what I want to do because that's that's what we were supposed to do. But we're just relaying information to the other person. Why can't we not relay that information? You know what an antonym is? I'm sure you're going to tell me. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not saying it meanly. I'm, I'm just asking. And again, I know I have a mean face sometimes. An antonym is the opposite of something. So the opposite of hot is cold. Okay. There you go. So cisgender is the antonym of of what your actual biological no, gender no, no, no. is. Correct. Trans Correct. Transgender. <clears throat> Trans. So it's a congruency. So cisgender is explaining your experience as your sex and gender align with one another, where a trans woman is saying that the sex and gender are not in alignment. And it's uh, think of it like an adjective to describe your experience. And even though we're both cis women, we have different 
experiences within our own, but it's just an antonym for a description um, to explain. And it's it's not a, um, it's it's not <laughs> offensive. It's not new. Um, so and let, it's trans let's take that it's one like step deeper and talk about how that is fundamentally lexical semantics, which exists only in a binary. And one of the challenges with gender and sexuality and the identities of those is there is no singular binary which exists outside of the antonyms list. Like the antonym structure itself mm -hmm. is an infallible structure of communication. And I can understand what you're saying. And I'm not trying to be somebody who is like confrontational in my experience anybody who's ever said oh but you're just a cis woman that right there it has always i've had a negative experience with being called a cis woman and that's why i go a little deeper it. into that why? what yeah, your, yeah. What was your, i'm curious to hear you what your negative experience is and if it includes i don't know getting dumped in a trash can outside of a bar for saying you're trans so no and with that i'm going to caveat to that with my re not even a rebuttal just as a why does it always have to be an extreme when somebody is saying that they have a negative experience we're not in a competition of negative experiences because if we're going to do that my bodily autonomy has been attacked my entire Ow. life just Ow. because i'm a woman I'm sorry. that's because you're a woman I can't even get health care my own self if I was raped and couldn't have. Okay, first of I all, fucking hell, trigger warning. Second of all, we cannot use that word on TikTok. Okay, well, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Elena, are there, are there over five bills barring you from health care? I'm not trying yep. to. Let's... Are there over five bills barring you from health care? What? are over 500 bills not allowing you to access health care i honestly don't know i live in a state no. where uh right now there's only 38 of the 500 bills targeting the lgbt community 38 of them actually apply to cisgendered women and also is if you don't like the word cisgender because you had a bad experience with it um do you think trans women are women they are women Okay, you just don't want to be referred to as a as cis, cis woman. woman. Yes. Why? Why? Because I'm a woman, period. So, a okay, lot of trans times women are women, so that doesn't tell us anything. And if the you reason just say why I'm we, a woman, period, doesn't tell us. I'm sorry, my man. The reason why we say cis woman isn't to be disrespectful or respectful, it is to make an identifier that you are not trans. So, a lot of us are only surrounded by us. Like we are a niche, really tight knit community because we have to have each other's backs. Um, you could bet Adara, I will fly my ass up north and beat the crap out of anyone who crosses you. I am okay. Very, let's very let's funny. let's watch it for TikTok's sake. But thank you. <laughs> um, and we all feel that way. We are unfortunately that there is a like a hostily violent movement across America right now where we have to be protective and vigilant at all times. So when we say you are a cis woman, we are making the identifier that you are not one of us. And I know a lot of people will say, well, I'm an ally. You don't get to determine if you're an ally or not. We get to determine if you're an ally. The same way that like we had a conversation about the, um, is everybody familiar with the boat accident that happened down in Georgia um, where the, the white family was all over the news, didn't want to move their boat. Oh, that was Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah, okay. yeah that okay, was Alabama. the Montgomery battle. I knew it was one of those like really backwoods southern states. Um, I just couldn't remember which one. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> You're fine. One of the questions, because I've got a lot of friends who went to uh, Morgan State, uh, an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. And I said, how do we help in that situation? Like, how can I, as a white woman, show a black person being attacked by white people that I am not a threat and that I'm there to help. Because we have to perceive 
almost anyone who is not part of our community as a potential threat. So when we say cis women, we are creating that almost boundary bucket. We're not trying to put you anything. We're not trying to say that you're a certain label. We're not saying anything about your identity. We are just making a simple label in the same way that someone would call me white. Does that make sense? Also, I would say it makes it's it's also not othering. A lot of times we do a lot of different communities do othering, and so when we just have the trans nomer, which by the way the trans community didn't ask for, but we don't have any. Then we have trans and not trans. We don't have like men's restroom and not men's restroom. We should have a counter and an, 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 um what Lollipoo said. I'm blanking. Um, the opposite of trans, which would be cis. And so it's it literally is just if we're gonna have one, we need to have the other because that way we are still connected as humans and we're not othering trans trans people going, oh, well, I'm a woman, but that's a trans woman. That's a form of othering. We're both women, just different types of women. And I believe that Adora uses the example of, um, or if it's not Adora, I, I know somebody else does, like tall women and short women yep. have different experiences, um, but both still women. Speaking of tall women, one of the most awkward parts of my transition was I went from six foot four to barely over six, like a hair over six foot. Really? And they told me I'm I've lost about an inch. They, yeah, they told me I've I lost, lost like three inches. I lost four inches. Damn. <laughs> and just that perspective shift, like four inches doesn't sound a lot, but when you've been tall your entire life and now you're like almost normal height, normal in quotations, um, <laughs> everything's different. Right. I've lost yep. three inches in height. I'm really good at climbing on the countertop to get to the top shelf. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to say thank you for educating me because that does help kind of make it into proportion okay. of kind of like the tall and short. Fantastic. Um, identifier. I appreciate that. So my question to you and then is so are trans men men? So yes, they are. Fantastic. Sounds it's like we've made progress. Thing. And yep. well, of course, it's like I said, it's about education and it's not about coming and it being an attack if those that were like myself, uneducated. Um, I know that the LGBTQ plus community is something where it's a community that does get a lot of hate from those who don't have the education, right? And it's not that people have nothing but hate in their heart, it's they're not educated. So I thank you for calming down with the rawness. I know I myself had a little bit of that too. And I just, I don't like labels per se, but the information after the fact, it does help. The what? So thank you. Great. I, I, I missed the very last thing you said. Oh, I said the educating with why that is something that we are called. Okay. Not well, just throwing it out there and making it seem like it's derogatory or that I'm put in this box because I identify as what I was given with birth. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it sounds to me like we've made some progress, Elena. Is there anything else you would like to talk about? No, thank you, though. And I will continue watching. Awesome. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I did. I did not expect to turn around there. I, I did not expect to uh, oh, have a good conversation. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, disagree. let's get some W Elena's. Yes, but I do w disagree Elena's. with one thing um, she was saying of, about it being like a lack of education. There are a lot of people that just hate us, even even if they oh, know yeah. us or understand. They just don't. They don't care. No, I I definitely believe that she still has a long ways to go for sure but I will take progress. Uh, pro progress means that there could be more progress. <laughs> so, yeah. We're gonna bring up the next guest. Just a reminder to everyone, uh, if you are a friendly, you are very much loved, but please do not request. We're looking for opposition only. Also, if you requested to talk to or about a previous guest, please do not request as we do not talk about previous guests. Your points must stand on their own. Do not talk for others.
and do not dead name or um, tokenize your friends. No. I'm sorry I walked that <laughs> one to there. As soon as it happened, it just kept getting worse, and I was like, I wish I could retract my question. I wanted, like, an undo button. Who said that? Hey. 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 What's up with you? Uh, old man, your background audio is really, really bad, so I've had to mute you. Um, if you could do something about that background sound, you are welcome to unmute. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to get that sorted out before you unmute. I'll give you a few seconds to, to sort it out. Otherwise, I will have to move on. I've sent you an invite to unmute, old man. It should be, uh, there we go. Is that better? No, it's not. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Just the audio is not getting better. No, it kind of sounds like driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This person's not connecting. Everyone keep tapping the screen. Probably coming near the end of this live. So maybe maybe don't tap the screen. We're, we're this close to 100,000 viewers, guys. We're this close. We can do it. How you doing, Wolfie? Hi. You're very quiet. Can you maybe come closer to the mic? Uh, sure. My bad. My bad. You sound better now. Uh, how old are you, please? I'm 20. Fantastic. And can men get pregnant? Uh, I mean, trans men can, but... Are trans men men? Yeah. Fantastic. Then we are on the same page. I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't expecting to actually get to join, so I don't know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds to me like we agree. Was there anything that you disagreed about? Um, since I got high during this conversation and lost, I don't remember what's going on. I just remember... I'm All here. right, I'm going to drop you. You have a good day. All right, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> that was interesting. Yo. How's it going, Yayo? What up? How old are you, please? 20. Fantastic. What year were you born? 2002. Okay. And can men get pregnant? Absolutely not. What about transgender men? Absolutely not. Are you aware that transgender men are female? Yeah. Okay, so females frequently have fully functioning female reproductive systems, meaning they're capable of carrying a child. Yeah, so they're females. Like, they're just, just right. females. Right. Trans, transgender men are female. Um, so... A yeah, transgender so man can get pregnant, not men. Right, females can get pregnant. Transgender men are female. So my question to you is: Can transgender men get pregnant? No. Did you understand a word that I just said? No, because you're just coping. I'm coping now. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is just like delusion. Like, okay, so what, what part this, about this, what I just said was confusing to you? This is bait. This is a bait live. First of all. You trying to get me to say something? Transgender men cannot. I, I got you to say something. I succeeded in my goal of getting you to say something. No, I, I meant like, like. Um, oh, did you say their, their age? What? Did they say their age? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Okay. Are you willing to learn? No, because it's delusional. Like, why? Okay, that's all I need to hear. It's delusional. That's all I need to hear. Goodbye. I'm delusional, <laughs> man. You deserve. Yeah. Guys, if you're not if if you're unwilling to learn, don't even bother requesting. It's crazy how you so simply explained what a relational schema was to someone and they still didn't get it. Like that is the simplest I have ever heard anybody Correct. describe <laughs> relational function of Mermaid, are you by chance a scientist? Because your verbiage is very scientific and I have to know. Um, I've got five degrees and um, I'm working on, I'm in the last year of my uh, PhD in information security management with a focus on healthcare informatics. 
Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Awesome. I'm just at three. Going to work on my fourth here as soon as I save up. How you doing, Grammy? Hey, love. How are you? Doing all right. How old are you, please? I'm 54. Fantastic. And can men get pregnant? Absolutely. Love to hear it. Absolutely. <laughs> So I was in a live earlier today and someone said, can trans men go to the OB? I hopped on that really fast and explained it this way. Maybe this will help the person that just left. A transgender man goes through a surgery to change their genitalia, not their insides transgender man can have children biologically themselves because unless they request to have their uterus fallopian tubes and all their female organs removed during said surgery they can biologically have a child so yes no. transgender no. men can have biological children yep uh grammy i appreciate you so much but i am looking for opposition so i'm gonna Absolutely. i'm gonna move on but thank you for coming up and saying your piece appreciate the support yep, love you bub support. bye hello real will 2.0 you with me hello Real will? Okay, I gotta move on. Also, transgender men don't have to go through the bottom surgery either, hence why we have seahorse dads. Yep. How you doing, old man? Oh, you're back. <laughs> I just What's clicked that, on that, uh, Yeah, I'm not hearing any background sound this time. Okay, so what are we doing? Uh, you gotta ask me a question? Yeah, I, got, I need to know your age. Oh, 32. Fantastic. And can men get pregnant? Absolutely not. What about transgender men? No. I don't believe so. Do you know what a transgender man is? Yeah, sort of. But I am going to tell you, okay. it's a man. Just, just a so man. I can make sure we're on the same page. I just want so yeah, to make sure we're on sure. the same page. Can you tell me what a transgender man is? Transgender man is a man is trying to be a woman. Okay, so no, we're, we're, we're not on the same page there. A transgender okay. man is assigned female at birth, but is a man. Therefore, a transgender man frequently has a fully functioning reproductive system. They're uh -huh. capable of carrying a child. I'll say that again at the beginning of that part, please. Is a, it trans a, uh, yep. a transgender man is assigned female at birth, but is a man. Okay. And how is that possible? Can he be a sign of female or man at birth, but is a man? Is a female at birth, but is a man? How is that possible? Okay, so what a, what a doctor generally does when a child is born, they did they just look between their legs and uh, and make an educated guess about their sex based on their genitalia. They do not karyotype. They don't do any kind of they don't uh -huh. do any other tests other than looking at a child's genitalia to determine their sex. There's more to their sex than just that. Um, there's chromosomes, there's gonads, there's neurological sex, there's hormonal sex. Um, these are all sex characteristics. Um, gender is psychological and social. So it's like how you present to society, the roles that you play in society, your internal sense of self. So gender would be man, woman, etc. I don't mean to cut you off, but that's kind of a bit of a lot to distinguish between a man and a woman. If you come out, my mama, or we just 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 talking now, you know. If you come out and then the doctor sees it, he has a penis or he has a vagina. Simple as that. You're a man or you're a woman. I ain't no Thank in between. Um, but hi, uh, I'm the in between. <laughs> hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm intersex. I'm also she her. <clears throat> okay. How is she her? You I was born again? with an ovary. I, I was born with an ovary, a testy, uh -huh. and, and ambiguous genitalia. I am intersex. I am the in between. 
So well, it's, a it's a birth defect that you have. It's not that you in between, or I mean, I'm just asking, not being rude or anything. Learn. No, it's just in between. It's people are born on a spectrum. It's the reason there's it's you know bimodal. On just a spectrum. because you have an ovary, Sexist. you are. I mean, uh, do you have a vagina or a penis? Not being rude, but just ask. My genitalia is ambiguous. Ambiguous. Okay, well, what ambiguous mean? It means you can be born with both part of each or neither at all. I thought so. I, I was just, I was just, you know, reference checking. Ambiguous. And okay. Then, that is what we call a visual ambiguous. It's something that you look at and you don't know which bucket from the start. And that's only from the physical perspective. If you look at it from um, the genetic and chromosomal perspective, for example, uh -huh. I have three chromosomes. I was uh -huh. born with a male physical body, but genetically was female. So mentally, hormonally, across the board, everything on me is female, except what my physical body was. Yeah. Right. right I'm XXY. Right, right. I have Klein filters. Hey, you ain't a man, Okay. Men can't get pregnant. So Mandy, men can't get pregnant then. Only the, the trans and the ambiguous, you know, humans can get pregnant. Is that what you're saying? Hello? Are you aware Sorry? that sex and gender are two different things? I ain't hear you say it again, Lollipop. Are you aware that sex and gender are, are two different things? Yeah, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. I'm just come from the old school, man. The Bible says God created Adam and Eve. I'm old school, so don't don't, don't feel like I'm disrespecting or anything like that. Someone may have to take this one just because um religion's not really my uh Okay. Um really Old thing. Man, uh, are you are you by yourself or do you have someone with you? Well, I'm sitting with my cousin and he's on live too watching you. Okay, cool. Can I can I get well, your cousin's by myself, eight I just need to make sure everyone listening is of age. Or yeah, he's he, he 42. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so what was the point you were trying to make? Well, I was just saying uh, I believe that it was created from a man and a woman, you know, so that tells me, uh, uh, you, you know, I'm not – it's nothing against the ambiguous or, you know, uh, birth defect or anything like that. I'm not talking about nobody. I, I'm, I'm – not biased or anything like that. I'm just saying I, I believe in it was a, from a man and a, a, a woman who said, "Oh man, what was the purpose of doing this?" Lie? I mean, I'm I not claiming to be anything other than a a, a woman. Uh, yeah. Nonetheless, the, the Bible says that it, that that God created man and woman, but uh -huh. trans men are men, trans women are women. So it doesn't okay. say that he didn't create non uh, that he didn't create trans people. Additionally, it okay. also doesn't say that he didn't create non-binary people. Right, right, right. But he also created 280,000 species on the planet that are all various ranges of gender and sexuality. We've got like 40% of snails are all agendered, and then one of them changes their gender. We have sea turtles that change their gender based around what the uh, sea temperature is. Um, it's like if all of those, if you're looking at it from a biblical perspective, Let's talk about like when we use the term affirming and non-affirming. And when you consider that from a theological view, that all expressions of gender are part of God's design for diversity within a created order, and non-affirming, where you refer to the theological view that there is um, gender variance that is either sinful within themselves or that they are morally neutral, but a kind of disorder. And what you're saying falls into that non-affirming the theological background. So uh, when we look at the, the scripture and its base text, one of the key parts that is a fundamental of Christianity is to love God with all one's heart, soul, and mind. And those three you can find multiple times, both uh, Deuteronomy, uh, I believe, 6, 5, and then that's Old Testament. And then New Testament, you've got Matthew twenty two thirty seven and Luke 10, 7. Yeah. And there yeah. are multiple other places in the Bible where it says that – your job is just to love and accept those around you. And there's been a lot of wrestling with scripture, and Christians have talked about this all the way back in Genesis. Like you said, so God created humankind in his image, and in the image of God, he created male and female. 
in his life. Yes, I was very familiar. Absolutely. Yep. So oh. if you grew up hearing all of these stories and living with people who seem to fit inside these binaries of existence, um, the existence of transgender people might seem like uh, an insult to the creator that you believe in. However, when you look a little closer at these passages, what you find is that there is a more complex and beautiful world that your God has created. And I say your God um, as I am a practicing Hakatian witch. Um, when God creates men and women in Genesis 1, it's after creating opposites in every other corner of creation, day and night, land and sea, flying birds and swimming fish. Humans then are also created at the end of it. But the problem with a literal reading of this text, that even though Genesis sets, Genesis sets up these binaries, God's creations all before that all exist in spectrums. So, okay, Albert, so you don't believe in God then? I believe in deities, and I work with two of them. Um, in between day and night, right, you have dawn and dusk. Between land and sea, you have coral reefs, estuaries, you have beaches. Between flying birds and swimming fish, you have penguins, you have uh, dolphins that fly out of the water. Yeah. You have that was a lot, though. That was a lot to just yes or no. Do you believe in God? I believe in deities, which is the collection and belief of multiple gods and goddesses. So, yeah, I, I, I hear that in your voice. So, so no, you don't believe in God. You believe in multiple I gods. Not in your I believe, God. I believe that your the Christian um, traditional God could be one of a pantheon that exists. And you can see I'm not that a Christian, though. I'm not a Christian. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. There's and only you know, one God. One of the rules of God is to have no other gods before me, which is an indicator right. that God is telling you that you should have no, you should believe in no other existing gods, which implies the existence of other gods. It does. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. Ain't no harm done. It's all love my way, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. I appreciate you, adorable man. Y'all take care. All right, have a good one, old man. All right, you too, buddy. No. All right, free cell crew. Uh, no, grabbing the props is not hurting me, but listening to that background sound was hurting me. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that I, was I want wrong. you guys. I saw a lot of you guys commenting when I was doing this. You guys were wondering if I'm in pain. No, that's just exercises that I have to do to make sure that my uh, that my implants settle correctly. I got to kind of push down and inward to make sure that they settle down rather than out. Um, the that pain is sense. largely gone at this point, I'm happy to say, both top and bottom. <laughs> you look That's amazing. awesome. I have to say, you look Sorry. amazing. You look Thank so you. much happier. You look a lot happier. It's it's nice. It's it's nice. I'm not going to say more. There's more I want to say, but it's nice. <laughs> um, sorry to hop in and field that set of religious questions. I was raised Southern Baptist. Oh, geez, you're good. You're good, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. I never know how to answer them because it's like I have such conflicting views and my own issues with it. So I don't feel like I'm, um, I don't feel like I have enough knowledge to speak on it. I can't hold or have a leg to stand on in the game, so I always defer it out. Yeah. As somebody who's been kicked out of church recently, I avoid it. Well, you can come to the church of me, which is just like, I like to think everybody gets along and I'm sure I'm probably going to get some hate for saying that. No, I don't think I'm God, but you know, I'll just say that. <laughs> I'm an omnitheist, but that confuses everybody when I try to explain that. So I'm sure it does. That makes I sense. have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm a practicing Galio, Galio Hellenetic pagan, but I believe in all. I'm that an atheistic sense. Satanist. <laughs> and that is perfectly fine. <laughs> that's fine, and then I'm sure you get the question all the time. So, does that mean that you worship Satan, right? Yep, that, and no, it does I not. Am. I do not believe in no, Satan. It does not. It does not. I am, however, going to have to go because I have to go drive school bus. Bye. Bye. Bye, Queen Jasmine. Okay, guys, we are going to bring up the next uh, the next guest. So, keep tapping away. The next guest is the next real media guest we get is going to be the last guest, uh, and then I'm going to just hang out a little bit. Then I'm going to play some video games. And then I'm going to hang out with my friends for the first time. I haven't really been out in public since boobs. So <laughs> uh, I, my old friends are 30 seconds away. There's no opportunity for me to get in any trouble between here and there. <laughs> okay, Sam Z. Sam's, you're 
potentially the last guest. How are you doing, Sams? Hi, how are you? Doing all right. How old are you? I'm 30. Fantastic. And can men get pregnant? Trans men can get pregnant, yes. Fantastic. And are trans men men? No. They're Why? Men. Trans man is someone that um, has a female someone that was born female and is um, trans, transing to a man, but they're a trans man. They're not a man. A, a trans man is someone who was assigned female at birth but is a man. There's no transition. You do not have to change anything about yourself to be valid in your identity. Um, so a transition is not required. So there's trans man and then there's man. I don't think that trans men are men. So what, what would you say is a requirement for being a man? So the requirement for me, a, a man is an adult that was assigned male at birth. Sorry, I didn't catch that. I said a man is someone that was assigned male at birth. Assigned male at birth. So you're saying that sex determines gender? Correct. By any chance, were you in the chats last night? Were you in? I don't believe so. I don't know. I don't think so. Are you aware that sex and gender are different things? No, I, I don't believe that. You, I, when you say a weird, okay. So, what do you know that the entire medical community does not know? Well, that's very controversial. I don't think that's necessarily true. It's I don't think it's controversial at all. I think, uh, I think you don't graduate medical school if you don't know the difference between sex and gender. Sex <laughs> and gender are the same thing. The National Institute of Health or the European Research Council for Healthcare. What was that? Would you like to start with the defining pieces from Yale, Harvard, Brown, all three Ivy League schools with top notch medical facilities, um, the National Institute of Health or the European Council of Health? I'm also a medical professional if you want to question that too, um, but I know that everybody is doctors, lawyers, and um, keyboard experts these days. So in your opinions, what is a man? What defines a man? An internal sense of self. So it's more of a feeling than... I do not call it a feeling. Internal sense of self. I call I mean, it it's a part of that we know about ourselves. What was that? It's it, it's 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 integral. Like Adora's saying, it's a truth we know about ourselves. It's integral within, built in within your neurology. It's 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 more than. It's not just a feel. It's not a feeling. It is it is a truth to which, when you look at yourself and you ask yourself, "Are you a man or a woman?" You immediately know the answer to that question. So, at what point does, at what stage do you think people have internal sense of self? When does that start? Three, I would say three, when three I, and seven. So, so to give seven, more context, so it's seven, well, someone knows if they're a man or a woman. Well, like, let me give more context really quickly because it because we know beforehand we just don't have the words or the way to convey this. So your hypothalamus starts forming between eight, uh, eight and ten in the womb, and then finishes forming between twenty four and twenty eight weeks uh, roughly. And so your identity is already there within you before you're even born. And then when you're born, it takes to about the age of three, going up to seven, for you as an individual to be able to verbalize that and be able to convey what that identity is. Um, well, actually how it works is that's not you know, a that's not a question or a debate that's factually how it scientifically works how it works I, I is have... scientifically is once the sperm meets goes through the fallopian tube and meets the egg on day three it's called a blastocyst which then becomes an embryo um that at that something... point it we can see um the that has nothing the... to do with your freaking brain there's nothing to do with your brain absolutely nothing your hypothalamus is, uh, do you know what your hypothalamus is? Tell me about that. No, I don't know what that is. Okay, tell me about your amygdala. I don't know what that is. Tell me about your hippocampus. I don't know. Tell me about the prefrontal cortex. I don't know. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, so you're still not, you're, okay, you're still so not explaining to me. hypothalamus, let's get as basic as we can here. Temperature regulation, uh, sleep, hunger, um identity um developed within your brain it's about the shape of an almond uh cis women and trans women tend to have similar structures of oblonged 
men have a long uh, shape. Okay, so, so then we do know a little bit about the difference of this. Now, this does not account for intersex, and there is some variability, and we're not out here scanning people's brains left and right. But um, it is not a choice. It is not, you know, Adora, nobody here on this panel. I understand it's not a choice of how someone feels. I get that. I do. Okay. But um, I still don't think that, like, I've seen lives where someone writes, um, women, trans women are biological women. That makes zero sense to me. Trans women are, so biological is referring to sex again. So, so biologically, that's a female that is not a woman. Does that make sense? Correct. But when you say biological woman, that's a compound word. It's like saying basketball, butterfly, like it's Nobody a compound word. Saying biological woman. I don't think you've heard anybody on the panel or the host say biological woman. So you way. guys are on agreement that it doesn't make sense to use that term biological woman. Artemis, you yes. like to this one. What was that? One, you know biological woman. Biological woman would just mean living woman. That right. doesn't give us any context you're, to what like what type of woman we're talking about. That. Let me rephrase that. You're in agreement that it makes no sense to say a trans woman is a biological woman. So when you say biological woman, as Artemis just said, it's just saying a living woman. It's not giving you context or detail to what you're trying to use as a descriptor or a word because sex and gender are different. Yeah, and but when you, when, I understand that it's two separate words, biological and women are two separate words. When you're using those two words together, that becomes a compound word, which basically is saying that a biological woman is someone that was born female at birth. That's what. Can that you prove means. that for me actually really quickly? Can you pull up a definition or a medical source or anything at all? You, that, you, uh, this argument is not about like um, sex. It's more. No, but you're making a claim. You're making a claim that a biological really, woman. You're making this really claim. I don't know what a compound word is. There's, there's a singular. I do. And I want to. You break them up. Um, when you say biological woman, you are creating a singular definition of what biology for women is. And that's not what biology is. Um, when we talk about sex, going back to Adora's initial question, sex and gender being different, sex is both the biological and physiological characteristics of male and females. And this includes not just what you're born with, such as your reproductive organs, uh, but it's also your chromosomes, your hormones, all of those things. Well, there are and conditions like Kleinfelter syndrome, other where the someone's right. born with XXY. I get that, you know, there are conditions. There's like, there's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar which on that. Exists, what was that? Which means it exists, which means it is a normal part of right. nature. I, I'm not ignorant on that. I do know these things exist. What I, what's confusing to me is how the definitions are being used and the whole vocabulary just keeps changing, which makes no sense to me. So, so the cool thing about science and this is something I believe Lollipop and I can really agree on is the beauty of it is that science is an evolution of our understanding of how the world works. And when I say the world works, I'm talking about everything from biomolecular science all the way to, holy shit, there's a galaxy shaped like a question mark. And that, that was amazing, by the way. <laughs> right? Yes, we're all pieces of floating cosmic dust that nothing in the universe cares about. Sorry, uh, religious people. Um, but when we look at the micro versus macro definitions of it, all of it changes. The simple understanding of here is a boy and here is a girl isn't a simple understanding of here's a boy and here's a girl. That is pre eighth grade level education um, by most standards of fundamental biology. And when you look at microbio and you start looking at how all of these pieces put themselves together in certain ways to create complex organisms, you really find that one piece out of 50 million can get taken out of place and then something different happens. And that different thing is amazing and it's beautiful to see because it's a deviation of what we perceived as the norm and that creates a new norm. So while the definitions are changing and evolving, they're not becoming complex. They were always there. What we're doing is we're evolving the language to match up with the verification and the validity of other people that exist. Yeah, if science, if like the definitions don't change and we just stay stagnant, then science is doing something wrong.
we're not moving we're not doing anything like like consistently like understanding the complexities of nature is the essential components of biology so like when you say biological woman in in my biologist brain a living woman i don't understand this this notion of compound work when you're talking about when when you break them apart biological is living one is an adult human female going by oxford but we also know there's secondary options as well so i like my brain's going to a multitude of different places because biological woman is not a word with a definition so for me, how I look at it is I, I get what you just said and how you explained it very well explained. But um, to me, certain words are not that complicated. It's it's really not. It's when you say when someone says the term biological woman, there's not really much thought to be made. It's just a biological woman is someone that was born female. I'm going to say this woman. as simply as possible, but you're going with the basic root of an etymology of a word and creating a compound word without looking at the depth that that goes into that Artemis and Mermaid. Both just said, too, with how complex what you're saying is, but you may not be aware of it. And it goes back to what I mentioned all the time. The more knowledge that you gain or, or, or the more education you seek, the more you realize that you don't know and you go deeper and you go deeper and you go deeper. So saying that it's a compound word and just shutting down and not learning is a very closed minded, narrow angled way of not progressing in life or as a species or as scientists or as medical professionals or as humans and it's and, it, and it's not yourself short but that's why cisgender exists that's literally what cisgender is and it's been around for a very long time so like that's why we use that's why we see this now in in peer-reviewed research search papers is when we're comparing transgender people to cisgender people because it's the terminology that fits and it makes sense and it works See, I don't, that's another thing. I don't understand why that is even necessary to compare trans people to, um, as you say, cis people, because everyone can live their own life. Everyone, there's no, there's no reason to compare it. And that it just makes it. It's called intersectionality. Intersectionality exists for a reason. But we're, those are two different types of women, but we're talking about different lived and shared experiences between different types of women. So this is something that you see a lot of times more so taught when it comes to race. So like, for instance, me as a white woman is going to have a very different experience from someone who was born Asian or someone who's born black. So, so we can recognize that we're both women, but we, and that's our intersection, but the different life experiences we have are going to be vastly different. So it's important to recognize those things. So you're saying the word man has a lot to do with life experiences. I'm just not right. sure I understand that. And it does because there is a social implication of male versus female. And we've seen this in various cultures across the world. There are cultures that have the third sex, um, the third gender in several African tribes, several Indian uh, sects, where there are, if there are too many men and not enough women in the family, they will raise one of their boys as a woman um, to do more of the female tasks. We have an entire civilization over in Africa where the role that you take determines whether you are considered masculine or feminine in your society, regardless of what your body is, even at all. So the way that we look at it and the lens that you perceive gender and sexuality is very limited right now um, in, in so, what you expressed here. Okay. I mean, so how can someone explain if there's a scenario where, let's just say in the world, there is no such, there's only one sex, right? There's only female. There's only, uh, um, I guess, woman. How would they... Six, feel like a man if it, that doesn't in a scenario like that how would that make sense because you're talking about the sociological feeling of what it means to be one of those genders and we've seen that in there are tons of species that have that there are australian sea snails that are all female or all male rather and when one of them loses in one of their um yeah but here we're talking about humans seahorses male seahorses give birth but we're not seahorses we're humans that's yeah, what i'm trying to say even that is Seahorses, again, from a biological standpoint, deviate from the norm that you've just uh, tried to redefine. Okay. Um, I... Also, I would just correct real quickly is, is that there would be a recognized incongruence, but the ability to have words to define that might be lacking. So in a society full of just women, there could be a woman that feels incongruence, but doesn't have the language to describe the incongruence.
point. So that's where the whole gender psychosocial schema aspect of the play is that if you don't have the societal elements to help with the identity, then of course you're going to have people just identifying what is around them, but the incongruence will still exist. Okay. I mean, I still, I'm going to have to say that I still, I, I see your perspectives. I do, but I'm going to pleasantly say that I'm, I, I just don't understand why is it, why you're making it more complicated than it is. I just, we well, were making it simple, uh, as simple as it can be. Uh, people who are opposed us are the ones complicating it. So I have a CAH, which is congenital adrenal uh, hyperplasia. So I am chromosomally female, but I was born with male genitalia. Yeah, you're a CA, CAH. Yep. I know what that is. Um, despite the- It's typically associated with females. I know. Yep. I was assigned male at birth. Because you have uh, over, overproduction of male hormones. Correct. So when you look at my deviation, it's not a super rarity. There are, I think they said between two and 3% of the entire country is born with one of these deviations. Usually so, one, in, one in every 1500 births. Yeah. Which is a lot. Um, so when you look at it, you can't have simple language for a wide range of um, spectral issues and issues across the spectrum. Um, <clears throat> and I say issues in the kindest way possible. Uh, there's not really a pleasant way to say this person has a genetic deviation from what our assigned norms were based on our understanding of something that goes back to the 1800s. Um, that was for you, Lollipop. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to get going. I, I'm off my lunch break, so um, I'm going to leave it be. All right, you have a good one. All right, bye. Bye. Okay. Oof. Okay, that was a uh, good morning of, uh, of lives. I'm going to end it now. Uh, someone asked if I'm playing a video game. Yes, I'm playing Starfield. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me up. I, you know, I appreciate it, and I love meeting everybody um, on the panel. No we definitely have to, like, I definitely have to follow you guys. I mean, just completely nerded out this morning. And can I leave you with one <laughs> bit of scientific fact? Because I don't know how it came up, but I, like, laughed so hard. So maybe you guys will laugh, too because I really like, you know, space and things like that. So I told a, um, a guest somewhere else this morning, because I was trying to prove that you don't know what you don't know, that 63 Earths can fit inside Uranus. And it was something that I just thought that maybe the world would, you know, like it's a good speaking point to break it up. Like you don't know what you don't know. So now the more you know. <laughs> I agree. Bye, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Everyone have a wonderful Bye, day. Everyone. I will probably see you all tonight. I'm, I'm not committing. Like, technically, we're back to my normal schedule, meaning 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then 8 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Um, but thank you so much for the hat. I appreciate it. Um, I am not committing to that while I'm in recovery. Uh, I'm going to do what my body tells me to do, and that means if I'm too tired, I'm just not going to go live like I did this morning. Uh, I Normally, I'm supposed to be live at 9 a.m. I didn't go live till what, like 10.40? Uh, yeah, sure. We can raid Goose. Is Goose live right now? Um, Goose isn't showing in my co-host creators. Let's see. Let's see if he's live. Uh, tick tock. Live. What is is he using a different account? Goose two point I think he's using a new account. Yes, he is using a new account. Uh, and I'm not following this account. That's tragic. Okay, now I am. Um, yeah, so Goose Caboose 2.0, guys. We're going to raid Goose Caboose 2.0. You all know the drill, right? Adora raid in the chat. Just don't spam it. Just write it once or twice. I wonder why a new account. There we go, guys. That's the account we're rating. All right. I see you all rating now. Goodbye. Have a good one. Bye.